Oh, you found it. <laughs> oh my, I got that. <laughs> That is my dog runs away all the time. Boy, hey, boy. Well, he was down at the bottom down there, probably. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> the whole time I've been here, they've been looking for this. Uh -huh. <laughs> door. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, out the door. Oh, I tried to. Hi, honey. Can you come up? Oh, you are a spirit husky, aren't you? Oh my gosh. Something. You are precious. Can I pet him? Absolutely, yeah. Oh my gosh. Watch out for his back leg, he might be hurt. Oh, you are a spirit husky. Hey, I got him. I'm up at Battery Park, I have him. Wow. Oh, you got all the yeah. birds. Okay, let's have him to me. Okay, thank you, Lucy. You soon. He <laughs> asked me. I came over there and said, oh, I'm All right. Oh, wow. Kenai's big adventure. Whoa. Ready? Are we ready to go? Yep, we're going to get you right to Bev's. We're going to go right to Bev's, huh? Okay. It was water. Okay. It's a water fountain over there. It's a water fountain down there. Yeah. I got that on camera. <laughs> What's his name? Oh. His name is Kenai. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Did he get hurt? Yep. Oh. Yeah, oh, so we're, we're going right to Bev's. Oh. We're going to go right there. I know, honey. You're okay. We're going to get right home, all right? Yeah. Hello, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson, Executive Director of Service Rendered Incorporated. Straight Talk Vermont is one of our programs, and we have many. Um, we have Art So Wonderful, we're about to put out some incredible events. The one is going to be 20, August 26 at UVM, I mean <laughs> University Mall, and one of our new spaces is called um, Art So Wonderful Annex and Performing Centers. It's right across from um, Targets, and it's going to be a free of community events. We're going to have uh, community community resources there, like Vermont Department of Labor, Health Department, housing people, giving out information as well as live entertainment, and all kind of cool things. It's free. It's um, 26 from 1 to 3 p.m. Thank you. So today, I am very excited to have Winooski City Manager Elaine Wang. I'm from Wong. Winooski. It's Elaine Wong. Wong, Elaine Wong. Yeah. She's got to correct me, which is good. And I live in Winooski. So Elaine Wong is my city manager. Yes, ma'am. And we meet a lot of times and we talk and have um, get some understandings about ways we can work together and how the city is operating. You know. So I want to first say to you, congratulations on your uh, position because you've been in this position since how long? It was May 16th, so about two months now. Two months? Yeah. Wow. It's been, a, it's, um, I, I've said this before, but it's really an honor of my lifetime to be excited to be a new city manager. There's nowhere else I'd rather be the manager for. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And um, I know um, um, when they had, they had other candidates, because I had met you at, at, at uh, O'Brien Center when they were doing like a meet and greet. And they had like, a, I think it was like three other, two other candidates. Two others, yeah. And um, they all had it very interesting and very smart and had yeah. good ideas, you know. Yeah. You had this glow about yourself though, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, and I, can, I probably can feel your, um, your inspiration about wanting to be with this city manager, you know. I, you know, I don't, I don't get, we're gonna talk about it a little bit, but like right now, so why? Why do you want to be with only with this city manager? Right. Well, so I mean, it's a really fun town. It's it looks cool. The community is cool. There's a lot going on for like 1.4 square miles. Uh, you know, kind of a little bit of everything. There's good food, mm -hmm. which is important to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really good food. Part of it is because so you know I got into local government about six years ago, and you know that opportunity to serve in a whole variety of different ways is really interesting to me, and. Also, you know, I'm BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, People of Color is a group term that obviously not everybody likes. I use it as a term of solidarity. I'm Asian, I'm Chinese American, my parents moved here from China as immigrants about 60 years ago now. I've been living in Vermont for the last 17 years. Wow. And, you know, being a person of color in Vermont for, you know, a period of time, already being in local government before this job, 
and having immigrant parents, that is a set of characteristics that there just aren't very many people that fit all those boxes. And that are not, those aren't qualifications, obviously. I still have to be able to do the job technically. Having those characteristics doesn't mean that I know how to reach people or listen well, but it helps, right? So it's like, it gives me a basis for understanding folks that live in the Um And I'm not just talking about the, you know, the new Americans or the, you know, people of color. It's everyone. Because, you know, I've been working on environmental issues. I've worked in primarily white organizations, frankly, my whole career. You know, there's a number of different things going on. You know, and, and it's not, and the, frankly, the murder of George Floyd, really a lot of local government officials, me included, were like, oh, we are not doing this good enough. Uh, we, we have to do better. So I've been trying to learn since then and, you know, try things since then. And the interesting thing about that, it's not only given me an opportunity to understand more like how our systems are not set up fairly or equitably or justly or in a welcoming way or an inclusive way for everyone of people of color and black people especially, indigenous people especially, people who are Latinx and so forth, um, but also people who have disabilities and of course anyone could be disabled. Right. And uh, people who are older, very young people, people who are impoverished. So, um, it's just, it, the last two years have been an opportunity for me to really think about access to local government services and what we can do to make our cities work better for everybody. And Winooski leadership, you know, from the council, the current council and the leadership team on staff and the community at large, you know, there's that sense of like, we really want to do this. We're not really necessarily sure how to do it. And that, you know, most communities are in that situation. I mean, most people who, most communities that are interested in equity are in that like not quite sure how we're going to do this yet mode uh in vermont winooski is certainly in my opinion in the lead in that and so being able to be part of that is why i'm so excited to be the, the next city manager yeah well we really appreciate you um and so yeah you're right so winooski is very um you know culturally diverse you know and um, uh, um new americans yeah, a lot of new Americans just came to Winooski, which is awesome. Yeah. It's so so beautiful to see so many types of people oh, wow. um, hanging out in Winooski. You know? yeah. um, uh, 25%, uh, 25%, I think. No, 22% it is. It's 25% oh, it's people of color, 22% new American. Yeah. Oh. According to the 2020 census. No, I, I, you know, I, you know, I, really, I, didn't, I probably saw that somewhere else, but I, you know, I'm glad you know it. Um, and so, um, since we have those type of individuals in our community who um they're they're you know they really are uh, new americans and a lot of the youth that goes to our, our rich high school and the middle school um are, are still long lear learning um uh, to speak um like english you know they probably speak english a little more fluid than english right? but <laughs> but i'm gonna say i'm really trying to get it together and learn what me meaning you know what it, um some a lot of things mean you know like um what united states what it, what, who are we, what thing, all the things that we mean and what we stand for, really. And so we always got to um, somehow make sure that we're helping them in the ways that, that um, we should, right? And um, so I guess, um, what are, what's some of the things that you think that we, how we need to uh, work with the people of different cultures and ethnicities and, you know, BIPOC and PLC and, and, um, and Nuski? What do you think we should do? How can we yeah. get closer? Right, yeah. Understanding. Basically, as you're wrong, do what the wrong is. Right? And, so, but, and so, I think that, before you ask that question, I think that's important that we uh, um, understand what they do, right? Their cultures. And then, uh, if you're going to live in America, you're going to live in Vermont, you got to understand what, what, what we do, right? What do we do? Well, I mean, to, you know, based on how jobs work, how our schools right. work, how our application process work, right. you know, they, those so, uh, maybe I should say that, that you need to understand those, what, those things, right? And these systemic stuff. And it's <clears throat> right, I think what you're getting at is like being able to have options, right? It doesn't mean that understanding how Americans do things, the, the, to me, the point is an integration. The point is you have options. If you know how the American systems work, then you, if you wanted to work for an American institution, you could do that. Or you then have the option to just plow your own path and, you know, develop things that work for your community and you can stay in your community. 
I feel like those that would be that's the goal, right? Is that everyone has the same options sure. to pursue whatever it is that they're interested in, and we certainly currently don't have that. So to you know, to your earlier question, I don't have all the answers yet. <laughs> well, you've been <laughs> on the job for two will. months. Um, I know what the heck have I been up to? Oh, gosh. Yeah, but you know, so some of the little pieces. I mean, um, there's like. You know, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that Winooski as an employer, the, the city of Winooski as an employer, has um, some staff that are not quite uh, straight. Um, I'm not sure about able-bodied. I feel like maybe most of our... I mean, I don't know. That's the thing. Like, the disability piece is not always the yeah. so it's hard to know. But the point is, like, we are starting to do that. But do they feel as included as our white staff or our staff that have grown up in the United States? I don't know. I suspect that the answer is not really, for at least not at the same rates. So there's that inclusion piece, right? And like us understanding uh, the diversity of our of our workforce, and then by extension the diversity of our community. Like on having that cultural understanding. You know, there in our equity audit um, that our equity director led the process for. She resigned for uh, for good reasons, but. Uh, one of the findings is that we're not a very integrated community and that the folks who um, answered who are new American and or people of color um, said that they feel welcome but not included. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a classic thing, right? You and I have had that conversation about how, you know, even my own, my parents, like my parents have been here for 60 years and they would rather talk to other Chinese people, especially my mom. Sure. You know, they have, she has her friend group and they're Chinese and they speak in Chinese all day long. She goes to Chinese stores, she goes to Chinese restaurants, not always. Awesome. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, she's sure. got that community and she's comfortable sure. in it. Sure. But, you know, my dad isn't like that. So there's like varying degrees of like what people want to have access to. And I think that, you know, there's definitely an opportunity there. I don't think that, you know, when it's long, long um, the older or more established Winooski community is necessarily trying to be exclusive. I think some of it is just like we don't know how to bridge that gap in a way that will um, feel comfortable for everybody. So, you know, I we've been kind of toying with different ideas with staff and the like official commissions and then our community partners. Like, what do some of those um, venues look like? Is there like a peer learning opportunity? Could we be learning each other's languages and making like language buddies? Um, could we be doing more block parties where everyone is involved? Could we be doing... Um, and, and there is some of that already going on. I mean, that predated you. Yeah. Know, having the block parties where... You know, there's... Some of their neighborhoods are a little bit more um, diverse than others. And having block parties there is a way to be like, oh yeah, here's this casual opportunity for folks to get together and feel like, yeah, I have the option of staying in my ethnic group or I have the option to, you know, hang out with my neighbors that don't look like me. So it just... It, it's I, and um, I've mentioned before. So one of my goals is to get out and meet 100% of our community. And if that takes my whole career, you know, that I want to do it. Um, and my whole career, because part of it is like, if you, it's, it, that's what it is. It's not like this big grand scheme where you do this and everything's magically better. It's really that continuing, continual building relationships, listening, trying things out, listening some more, trying things out. That's how we're going to get there. So me being out there, council being out there, our, the rest of our staff being out there, our commission members being out there, and then hopefully, you know, there's that um, building that trust where they're like, okay, yeah, we have our organization, but we're willing to kind of let you in or come to you and then have, yeah, you know, just continually building that up brick by brick. That's my feeling. That's how we're going to get there. Well, you definitely was on the ground. Because, uh, you know, you're always in the community. You're always um, trying to learn what's going on. You're always you know, out there. You know what I'm saying? Trying. Yeah. Well, you try to be there. I mean, can we can't we can do so many. If we had There's two, only so many hours. Today. How many lanes can we uh, come <laughs> and get them out there to do everything you want to do? Well, it's you know, it's uh, there's a lot of us. You know, there's like a hundred people that work for the city in one capacity or another. You know. Yeah. You know. So, uh, so yeah, we talked about this before about um, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and well, I'm go justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We talked about that some. So, um, what do you, you know? Uh, what do you, what do you think people um, 
like every, I don't know if you can answer this question, but most people, your businesses, community organizations, you probably maybe talk a little bit about DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion. What, what, what do you think, what that um, minimum goal, what do you think minimum people, minimum goal is how to, to um, make things better in, for the person, equity, and inclusion, you know? Do you, you have any idea that what people might want, how to, were they thinking about how to make things a little better? Or? Minimum goal. Well, um, yes, I, I feel like, and again, I still, there's still a lot of more experienced community partners that I need to run to discuss this idea with. But something that's come, been coming out of the, um, the federal funding that Winooski has because of the pandemic, it's a, you know, a decent amount of money that we want to spend wisely and invest wisely. So uh, trying to consult the community as part of that, council's been holding uh, listening sessions with, uh, with the community. We, we did a survey that anyone can answer to, they can still respond to, it's on the website. Um, but they've also been doing language specific listening sessions to make it try to be more accessible to folks who might look at the survey and say, well, that's too much work to understand what it's asking. So through that process with our language communities, it's been coming out one of the areas that I feel like we could, uh, that has potential, is English language learning for adults. So, you know, we have folks in our community that have been here for like 10, 12, 15 years and don't have, don't feel comfortable interacting in English. And that feels like such a huge uh, potential just is locked away behind a language barrier. If we could figure out a way to more efficiently um, have folks learn English or provide like English language learning opportunity. Uh, that feels to me like it, like there's so much more potential that could come out of that. They would have more options for employment. They would have more options for starting their own business. They would have more options for accessing services that right now they need a translator to get to. Um, and we only have so many amazing cultural liaisons and translators that are available um, because there's funding constraints. So it's like trying to. Um, that seems to me like a potential. There does seem to, be, seem to be some interest in the community to be like, yeah, we want to learn English so we can do things for ourselves. Sure. There's so much we could do if we have that. But, um, so that's one idea. You know, the city, that's, good, that's a good idea. It really is. But, but the city doesn't have any hard interpreters, do we? No, we don't. Yeah, and that's one of the weaknesses, right? Like, we rely on the school's cultural liaisons, and they're so. <laughs> They're amazing, and there's a handful of them. We cannot possibly hope that all the work goes for them. So that's part of my thought of like, if we have more people with more, more, with more English proficiency, then we're not so dependent on the cultural reasons. We will always need them. Uh, but having more people who can do more of the pieces themselves and access services themselves seems to me to be like a, a way to not have that bottleneck between the community's potential our um, limited English proficiency community and the things that they could be doing in Vermont. So, um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm an inclusive belonging commissioner for the city of Whiskey. Yeah. Now, how, if, this, if we had a commission called Language Commission, I don't know, how, how would that look, or, or committee, or how would that, how would that look? I mean, how, what do you think that would look like? Well, I gotta say, so for some of the initiatives that are like this, I feel like it's not a matter necessarily of a commission. It's a matter of like making sure that we understand from as many people as possible who would want to make, who would be interested or not interested so that we could shape a program that would make sense. Like having it, again, like funneling through a limited number of people feels um, uh, not necessarily like the right approach. So I, the, I, I mean, of course, there is still somebody who has to organize it. So sure, yeah, that's, that's, my that's, goal is to <clears throat> consult as many folks as possible so that we can just design it in a way that's going to be what they need as opposed to funneling it through a filter or like, or like say, a, a limited number of people commission. Yeah, so how many commissions end up doing like now? Like four or five or something? Like? That the city currently has? Yes. Um, it might be six, including the boards. Development Review Board, Planning Commission, Inclusion and Belonging, Finance, Housing, 
municipal infrastructure, safe, healthy, connected community, uh, safe, healthy, connected people. Um, municipality. Municipal that infrastructure, I think uh -huh. I did that one. Yeah. And of course, city council, so uh -huh. maybe I'm missing one. You see planning? I, I think so. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Quite a few. It is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it may need yeah. to be staffed so that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, you know, um, so that's good, though. So that shows a lot of strength for um, <clears throat> Wodiski and city government, you know, shows that, you know, all the people that, that are part of these oldies commissioners or if they're not staff people, they're um, volunteers they're from the community. Right. And they actually want to um, have some, for them to pick those commissions or to be picked to be on those commissions, they must have some ideas, some suggestions or some, um, 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 I'm trying to say that. Want to be part of the solution. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we're so fortunate to have uh, people are willing to serve, and I, I think it's interesting that the city has these bodies as a as a, a signal that, like, yes, we take these goals seriously, and we want the community's input. This is one way is through these commissions. So now, before you came to the wonderful city of Winniski, I thought it was 1.7 miles. Is this 1.4? I think it's 1.4. I um, heard you say 1.7 yesterday, so I haven't looked. Um, I've gone back to check. Yeah. So you could be right. You've been here a lot longer than me. Hey, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I, was, I was like, well, I, I want to say 1.10, you know what I mean? <laughs> Make it even larger, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For real, but you know how it is, you know. We get, it is what it is. So, um, so um, you come from some other part of the state working in say, some type of government, right? Yeah. yeah. And that was? Yeah, I worked for the town of Barrie. Yeah. I was the uh, assistant town manager there. Um, so there I had some focus areas, it was uh, recreation, human resources, uh, capital planning, and I feel like there was a fourth one that I can't remember. Oh, IT. Yeah. So very, <coughs> I like Barry. I used to, um, I was going to open up a youth center there in Barry, working with uh, the mayor at the time of um, Luzon. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Thomas Luzon. Yeah, you know. Uh, that's Barry City, I work for Barry Town. Oh, that's right. It's sort of like the relationship between, well now it's Essex City and Essex Town, yeah. right? Yeah, or St. Albans City and St. Albans Town. So yeah. we're like the rural part of, you know, that yeah. region. Okay, so that's different. But I ha yes, yeah. So, yeah, I know that's kind of different, right? And actually, it's the same thing with Winooski and Colchester, which I didn't know until I got hired for this job, that Winooski used to be Colchester's downtown and then it separated. Wow. I see, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's a fun story because um, <laughs> the table in council chambers we inherited from Colchester. So it's a hundred years old. That table is a hundred years old oh, wow. nice. because we just had our centennial oh, wow. birthday. So one hundred. Yes. Yeah. We're going on one hundred and one. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It looks pretty damn good for hundred. Oh well, no. I just said it, damn. Well, it does. It does. Yeah. So um, hundred years. Wow. What a what a something else. It's yeah. it's kind of weird because like I live on East Allen Street in Winooski. Yeah. And um. And so you're in Winooski, and then you soon you get across like this, you know, a little further up. It's like, you know, you're in Colchester or something, right? Yeah, How yeah, weird yeah. is that? Now, no, that's, now Especially that's Miles Bay Avenue. It's like, wait, right, where is it exactly? Right. I'm not sure. And yeah. then you're like, welcome to Colchester. Right, yeah. Uh, it's just like, like, okay, some guy named Colchester was going to buy everything. <laughs> right. We're going to buy a piece of this and we're going to buy a piece of that and he's going to call it still payment in Colchester. We don't care. Well, and actually to that point, that's why, that's one of the other things that I'm happy about when you see it actually has an Abenaki name, or at least derivative of an Abenaki name. I don't know that there's anywhere in Vermont that that's the municipality that has that. Yeah. Well, they got the, well, we got, we're, we're the Onion River. Well, right. That's the, when you, yeah. The, so, that's the river though. I meant like yeah. a municipality. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting because like you go around um, the river and you go around where the salmon run places, you can see those. Uh, you can see where the onions are still. Some of them are still coming up to. Yeah, yeah, up. yeah. The, the ramps, right? The ramps, They're yeah. also called ramps. Wild onion, wild leek, wild Yeah, ramps. isn't that cool? It is cool. I yeah. know. And the river is so incredible, right? It's it is. It's so beautiful. It's what? funny. I'll tell you a story. But can I tell you a story? Sure. About it? So where I used to live in Berry Town, we were right by the Gel Ranch River, and my mom, my mom used to call it the Million Dollar View. And so she was to come over and say, oh, your house is worth a million dollars. It's a million dollar view. It's like, well, it was not worth a million dollars. But yes, I agree. It was a, a really nice stretch of the river. Yeah. Like, and if you go all the way up and down the Joe Ranch, it's the most beautiful stretch. 
because there's like a little bit of falls and some rocks and stuff. And then when um, when I showed her Winooski, because she visited after I got the job, she had the same feeling about that stretch of the Winooski that Winooski covers. She's like, oh, this is also a million dollar view. You move from Barrytown, but this is this is a good no substitute. Doubt, right? She's right. Yeah. Because um, I would say it's more than a million, but well, that's a good, yeah. good word to use. Huh? Yeah. Um, well, so, so how do you, so, so Zala, if you look around when this is, wow, there's a lot being built there. It's a lot coming up, a lot of things coming yes. up, right? Yeah. What is that? What's going on? Housing, how, how, these, how, how all this stuff springing up so fast? Oh. One minute was nothing. <laughs> but then next minute is like, there's this um, spinner plays and yeah. all those, all those small housing down, up, down, that way. And, right, yeah. Uh, so every you seem like everybody's building up something, which yeah. is good, I guess, right? Is that good? Right. Yes, Found it is. It is, and um, I know there's, you know, there's disagreement about that. So there's a couple of things with that. Uh, actually, I, I'm fortunate. I landed in Vermont just as they were developing that. So back then, the city leaders had the foresight of developing a tax increment financing industry. So that the idea of that is. The city is able to borrow money to build out sewer and water lines and other kinds of infrastructure that would improve it and make it more attractive to the private developers. Because otherwise, the private developers have to pay for all that, and it's just, you know they might not feel like it's worth it. So that planning and that structure did attract a lot of, of um, development. That's where the downtown so core sprang yeah. up because of the TIF district, yeah. as we call it. Yeah, TIF, yeah, TIF dollar. Well, that comes from tax payers, right? TIF money? Well, so there's a, there's a, the, the loan came out for that, but then it's paying for itself with the taxes that are, um, that's why it's called tax increment, because the increased value coming from those developments, it comes from taxpayers, but it's from new taxpayers, the ones that are developing those, those big buildings. So that was one piece. The second piece is that with that, that attracts more investment. It's like, oh, there's a cool downtown here now. There's housing here now. There's business, interesting businesses here now. So then it'll attract other developments. So if you go up the corner on Main Street, that is not in the TIF district, but it's like, it's um, the interest in building there, redeveloping those spots came from, oh, there's this great investment downtown. Part of what made that development come up as quickly as it did is because we now have, um, we now have, what do they call it? Form-based code. So that's a planning tool that allows for, uh -oh. speaking of accessibility. So uh, form-based code is a tool that allows for developers to streamline the permit process. Uh, form-based code, usually planning and zoning is developed uh, in a way that says like, you can only have commercial um, buildings here or we want industrial uses here or we want residential here. Form-based code says more or less, we don't really care what you're doing inside this building, what we care is what it looks like. And as long as it looks this way, then you'll probably be allowed to do it. It's much more streamlined. So that, uh, that shortens it up because usually when you say, okay, well, I want to put an industrial, you know, like a plant there, or I want to put in a business there or build a new commercial building, then you have to go through all of the review of what it looks like and how much of the, the lot you're taking up with the building versus green space versus parking. But with form-based code, you're telling them, this is what it needs to look like, and we don't care what you're doing. So it makes things a lot faster. So some of the development that yeah, we're looking at is because, because I'm, of that. I'm telling you, um, permits is like, in like places, in other places around the state, and it's incredible. Some of my um, yeah. advisory board members like, they are all developers and they like. Yeah, right. It's painful. It's painful. Yeah. Like, for instance, like, the, uh, the Burlington Mall is going to be turned to a residential unit. It's 330 units and two streets open up uh, Pine Street and St. Paul Street. Um, and um, um, so, uh, uh, green space, you know, and it's going to have uh, all kind of good stuff. You know? And we've been working on that since 2013. They mm. were like, the whole, the whole, you know what I mean? We're like, we yeah. tried, man. Yeah. So it's been always permanent and you know, all kind of stuff. You know, it's like crazy. I learned a lot from the from, um, yeah. person who owns that property. Oh, I bet, yeah. From just being a part of it. We used to laugh and probably look out this window on the wall. Up, you know, 
yeah, we're about to go in, we're about to dig the hole and build this, you know. And then, right. ooh, Not that was, easy. <laughs> 2013? No way, man. Yeah. That's a long time. So, oh, actually, I'm sorry. You asked a question earlier I wanted to answer because I thought it was a good one. So, oh, is it a good thing? The re one of the reasons why I would say it's a good thing is because it reduces the tax burden on everyone else. So if you want consistent services, like the ones that the city is already providing, or if you want more services, it's either going to come out of your pocket or it's going to come out of the taxes from new development. So having new development helps support current and potential new services. So in that way, it's, it's good. It reduces yeah. the tax burden. Yeah, some of my um, other um, advisors and uh, former board members are still sponsoring our stuff. Have incredible uh, properties in um, in um, in properties. They got they got something else they about to build from some trenches. Great, you know, incredible residential housing, you know, for individuals, families, you know. And so I'm just so happy that they're able to be able to build things and um, you know, love them, just keep in it forever, and also be able to help families by building new residentials for residential residents for them. So I just can't wait till this start work coming up. I saw the drawings and some properties and some of the things that some of the All right, we definitely need more housing. I mean, the, my top four external prop, um, priorities, and they're not mine, they're the city. Um, but the, these, these are how I'm framing it in my head, is housing, equity, access to local government, and impact on taxpayers. So like in the space of our last few minutes, we've talked about a whole four of those yeah, things. Yeah, sure. And so I found out last night when we had our inclusive and belonging meeting that that I chose to be on the uh, planning, I'd be a liaison to the planning yeah, uh, okay, yeah. commission. And so, <clears throat> what do exactly do? What? Because I had this, it, it was a conflict with some of us being on the same, picking the same ones. So, sure, sure. And I think, um, I think I had to switch. But anyways, what? So I'm on the planning. So what is? Okay, yeah. What do? What do? What do the planning <laughs> committee do? <laughs> right. So the planning commission has this very important role of reviewing our zoning bylaws. So that, that's a big, big responsibility. There's this big, there's this long list of laws that apply to how we can develop. Um, and what, um, yeah, it's like basically like everything above the ground. Like how is it supposed to look? Where is it supposed to go? That sort of thing. That's kind of a simple way to put it. Um, what kind of parking? What kind of, what style of housing? How big is the housing? Are they multifamily? Are they single family? Are they, you know, whatever. So reviewing all those laws is, one key uh, role of the planning commission. So right, they've been reviewing sections at a time. They just finished a big update that hopefully will um, promote building of more housing with more bedrooms in it because we know that- Yeah, one or two is not gonna be good enough. Yes, exactly, yeah. Especially for new American families that have a bigger family size. Yeah, three to four would be nice. We need in Vermont, we need, we need young people being able to grow up here and have opportunity here. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that will attract some more um, developers that feel like, oh yeah, it's worth it for me now to build housing with more bedrooms than we're using now. So that, we just, they just finished a big update on that chapter. In the next chapter, there's a number of different things involved, but there's uh, an includes parking and recreation and several other chapters. So reviewing the laws that govern how our city develops is a big role of Sometimes uh, um, it will, it, it tackles other topics as, as well, and that's, that's so another thing we talked about too uh, at our meeting yesterday, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I I brought it up and, and we talked about it. Is that um, <clears throat> so we're talking about um, Manusi being 100 years old? Yes. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's gonna be. It's so many people that's been in Manusi that's not around for 100 years old. So <laughs> so it's gonna be 100 probably uh, 50 even when we're in, whenever we're in the green or not. But uh, <clears throat> so one thing I was thinking, because uh, as I look in the lobby. And I see all this cool. I look at. I was looking at the mayor's picture and all those other mayors' pictures. She's got the other one in color, right? And all of a sudden, it was black and white. I'm like, I think the one previous one was also. Oh, yeah. you think so? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think the color is color. Yeah. Well, anyways, so well, I talked about the um, mission goals and objectives of the city. You know, um, the, when you first like a, when you first build a, some anything, go put something together, or have an idea. You come up with some mission why you want to do it right or some mission statement and or some charter on the head to come up with a charter or something and so i'm wondering out of 100 years and i see nobody up there on those pictures that look like me nobody zero 
I see, I bet it's not no Abenakis, I bet no, you know, indigenous people or anybody that's... Well, yeah. I, uh, if I was a guest, you know, I don't know. But. If I were to guess, yes too, but it's harder to tell with Abenaki because they're, you know, sure. there's a lot more, there was a lot of mixing that involved. That means that we still have a lot of Abenaki people among us and we probably don't even realize our yeah. Abenaki. But my that point, said, yeah, it that seems said possible is, that... My, my point is yeah. that I think... You know, like companies and business and organizations do this all the time. When they get to a certain age, they start going back and looking at where's our mission goal? Are we following our mission goals and objectives? Do we spend on our charter? Are we really doing what, what we said we're gonna do? Should we, what, what are we missing? You know what I mean? Should right. we amend to the following? You know, so I think that the people, that somebody should go over the mission statement of the city and find out, you know, uh, <clears throat> Uh, people who look like me and you included in, in within what is what is that? You know, it's like um um <clears throat> like I don't believe I was really included in like when um Benjamin Frank Franklin wrote the Declaration and I agree you know, with you. And, um, yeah. Adams and all the rest of those cats were sitting right, around yeah. there, you know. Right. Um, I don't believe I was. And so um and um the Constitution of the United States. I don't. I don't know if it's been amended or I, it should be. You know what I mean? I think we. You know, based on where the world is today and things that we're trying to do and um, ways that we're trying to be. You know, understanding that each of us, each of us want to uh, want to do for others. You know what I mean? And how we're gonna get better. And so, I think. You know, we need to look over that mission statement. If it's one word, if it's if it's if it's Three sentences we gotta add. It's Adam. If it's three, three sentences, five words we gotta take out. Let's do it because <clears throat> if we're not working under which we, how we was created, then why would we? Why? Why would we um, continue to work? Do those, do those, um, follow the mission statement, the charters, whatever. Why? And if it's something different that we're trying to do, like diversity, equity, and diversity, and inclusion, or DI, whatever. Why? Where's that in there? All right. Somebody show me. I gotta look at that myself. <coughs> I'm gonna read it myself. You know, figure out what part of it that's something we got to do with people. And right, yeah. other, you know, everybody. Right, right, yeah. We're not trying to, you know, I just think like, <clears throat> I think like, um, like people, the bylaws are changing. I think that um, either police got, uh, uh, they check, you know, they got the fair and partial police, FIP. I mean, they got that in there, you know, kind of like, this is who we are, you know what I mean? Right. And, um, and this is what we believe in. You know, fair to all people, blah, 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 blah you know, things right. they say. And so, <clears throat> so that's the same thing with, um, uh, they were, they've been inclusive. They started to create and make sure that they have something that, um, that includes everybody, you know, you know, based on whatever it is. You know, so, right, um, sure. So, that's, I think I think I'm gonna see some of that. Um, you know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm not the one to say take that word, put that word down back. I mean, certainly, you know, I mean, maybe to help decide if you know somebody needs something to change. I'm sure somebody gonna say, yeah, let's change this. Now, everybody's gonna say, you know, I right, probably right. have something to say That's too. True, but yeah. but um, <clears throat> but I'm just trying to say we're not actually doing what. We, sometimes it's so some things are sweeter than what they are. They say some real, and we're the best, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna love everybody, and we're gonna hold hands. And, Every Sunday we're gonna, you know, have dinner together, you know, you know, that's yeah. in theory, you know what I'm saying? Right, and so, right. but, and they don't do that, right. you know, so, because a lot of times people do that, just to get things passed, get things, you know, I mean, you know right, that's, a good, that's a good thing, so let's, 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 let's give them a great, a great, give them approval, you know, it happens all the time, absolutely. every day, it yep, every, because, you know, yeah. you gotta use the good words, right. you know, those are the words people use, you know, that, right. that's not necessarily they think perform. I'm actually doing it right now. Yeah. So I agree with you, and it's good to have community members constantly saying that to us to hold us accountable, um, and you know, being part of it. So I'll I'll do a quick digression, not to, to stray from your point. But the interesting thing to me, like once I got into local government, the role of the charter is actually to tell you how to function. So it tells us things like this is how you you know if you're going to make decisions as a count, you have a council, you have a council manager from the government. Uh, the manager's role is to do these things. Uh, the council, you know, if the council wants to take action, they have to have these public hearings. 
this many and this many days. It's like very like procedural. Then you have your laws to, to like govern how things are gonna work. The nice thing about, when, so it's it's kind of, um, I mean, I don't know, you could review the charter and actually that's why we have all resident voting is that, that took a charter change. So there's definitely pieces where you can be more inclusive um, that have to do with the charter. But from day to day, the mission statement, I feel like, is, is, a, is, a, is a more direct document to work with. Uh, so with the, the, with Winooski's mission, in terms of like keeping it alive and making sure we're continually checking in, um, definitely before me, some, some, somebody of my predecessors and council and leadership team and the community, I'm sure, um, has, there is a, a pretty uh, robust vision statement. So these commissions I just named, they're named after those visions, or um, those, I'm sorry, those, uh, those goals. So it includes, you know, quality and misdemeanor infrastructure that works for all. It includes safe, healthy, connected people. It includes, um, oh, I'm forgetting the other one. But those pieces, that's one of the ways that we make sure we're continually um, living by those, those uh, goals. The other piece is that every year there's a strategic planning retreat that the council and leadership team goes through and they are open to the public. So the most recent one that they did was in June, and that was, you know, it's like maybe two weeks in on the, sa the Saturday, I, you know, that was a meeting that I went to. So, again, like the reviewing each of those mission areas, staff is coming up with proposals to work on in the next year that live out those pieces. So the ones, the, the actual priorities that I can think of that council uh, voted on during that meeting that have to do with equity, inclusion, and belonging, they're not, you know, they're not the end all and be all, but these are things that directly speak to what you're talking about. How, are, how is everyone included? Um, there's an ADA accessibility plan that we want to be um, carrying out this year, that we have a grant to do, that we are you know, starting with a, um, it's a, um, it's a survey of all of the handicap ramps and all of the sidewalks in the city. You know, that's a very basic thing that isn't just for wheelchair accessibility, it's also for you know, elderly people, people with mobility issues, people pushing strollers and all that kind of stuff. Um, then there's a piece on making sure that the Inclusion and Belonging Commission is off, <coughs> off the ground and, and supported properly. Um, there is a piece on landlord-tenant relations and education, which, you know, of course, that hits on low-income. New Americans who are also low-income, BIPOC folks who are also low-income. Um, we have a huge portion of our population is, is renting. I think it's 60% or 70%, which is one, some of the highest in the state. So having, you know, making sure that renters know what their rights are in the language that works for them, making sure landlords know what tools they have to provide quality housing, uh, making sure that they know how to talk to each other in a way that's productive, that's a big goal that came out of, or that's a priority that came out of that planning session. Um, I keep, oh, internally, staff has to reflect our community. It does not right now. How do we be ready as an employer to receive uh, folks who maybe not, are not used to American workplace norms. That's important for us to be able to, you know, and, and it's a number of things. That, I mean, I'm excited about that, partly because, it, yes, it's the right thing to do. Cities are good, are good places to work in terms of access to benefits and decent pay and um, be able to do work that's meaningful, that's, you know, of a, that feels like um, it's serving folks. So it's a good job to have. Are we ready to employ folks that, um, aren't necessarily familiar with that job, no we're not. So we need to do better on that. So that's one of the goals is like, how do we better reflect the community? What do we need to put in place so that we can do that? And not just on the, you know, the lower echelons or the, the less or lesser paid positions, but on up the chain. There's a lot of work we need to do, to do there, but it is a, one of our priorities. So these are some of the ways that we're trying to, to again, build those bricks towards the building that we want to see. Elaine Wong, if you want to add anything before we go, um, yeah. you know, I can sit and talk with you for like, <laughs> forever. And we have. We have. You want to add anything? I would, yeah, thanks. I'm going to talk directly to the camera now. So anyone who lives or works in Winooski or plays in Winooski, visits Winooski, shops in Winooski, what have you, I want to meet you and get to understand your perspective. So you can reach me at EWANG at WinooskiVT.gov or you can call our offices at 655-6410 and I am 
that's my goal. I want to meet everyone, get to understand everyone. There's 8,000 of you that live there. I feel like that's doable. So I encourage you to reach out. I hope you will. Well, so let me tell you, when you when you view our our, um, our um, cable show with the city manager here, um, you're gonna see a dog named Kina 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 yeah. that our wonderful city manager grabbed while he was r running through because people were looking for this dog because the dog got injured. You know, I think uh, on yeah, a mobile accident, so he ran yeah. off, or he ran off, and here he is. You know, he ran past our wonderful city manager. She grabbed him. The lady, she's coming, and um, she got her dog. So, how wonderful is that? Well, I gotta say, there was a young person involved in that. It wasn't just me, because the young person came up to me and said, "Hey, have you seen a husky?" If I hadn't heard that, I probably just would assume the dog, you know, was with someone else. So it takes a village. That's right. Yeah. Our cameraman Travis, he also That's knew right. all about exactly. it. Wait, you know, they asked him about the dog too. So, hey, we did something good <laughs> today. We saved the dog. And he was injured. He was. He was really injured. He was. So, okay, and I was okay. so happy they was able to walk. He was still walking on, it, yeah. on his um, hind, hind parts of his leg. But, right. So, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Straight Talk Vermont show. And uh, we'll see you again. <laughs>